Joining us now is Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Welcome, Oji. Good, good morning, morning, Dr. Abati. How are you this morning? I'm good. I can see we're all wearing our puppies. Puppy. Yes, perfect. Good morning, Ayo. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing great. Looking regal in Thank white. You. Good morning, Rufi on fire. Okay, today is a day of violence. I think so. <laughs> I'm I think so. Violence. I think so. I mean, I was you doing that exciting with thing. <laughs> we violate them. <laughs> Well, all right. Akpala, I, mean, akpala. I mean, our stories today, I mean, I mean, let's just begin. Good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. Social media is awash with reactions over the arrest of human rights advocate Dele Farotini, who on Tuesday morning alleged in a statement that officers attached to the AKT police command has perfected plans to abduct him from Lagos. Farotimi accused the command of deploying questionable means to lure him for arrest despite honoring the invitation of the Zone 2 police headquarters in Lagos some weeks ago. The spokesperson for the Akiti State Police Command confirmed Farotimi's arrest to journalists on Tuesday, saying that he was arrested over a petition about alleged defamation and cyberbullying, but declined to name the complainant. We know that the activists had said that police officers from the Akiti Command were acting on a petition allegedly filed by Afe Baba Lola, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Let's take some reactions. Inibehe, he had written on X saying that distance from Lagos to Ekiti State is more than seven hours. There is no airport in Ekiti. That is the horrendous journey the police is embarking on because of alleged case of defamation of character. Dele Farutimi wrote about the rot in the Nigerian criminal justice system and he's experiencing it again in real time. As a lawyer, it is one thing to know how deeply flawed Nigeria's justice system is. It is another thing entirely to personally suffer from that unjust system as a lawyer. I'll take Peter Obi's tweet. He wrote, I just learned of the arrest of Dele Farotimi, a respected human rights lawyer and advocate over an alleged Allegation of defamation. This action is a gross misuse of police powers and a grave assault on the principles of democracy and justice in Nigeria. I condemn this action in totality. It represents not only an attempt to intimidate opposing voices from questioning authority. It is also a worrying signal to every Nigerian who loves and values freedom of expression and dares to demand accountability and transparency. I'll take Atedo Peter Side's tweet. He wrote, the people writing petitions against Dele Farotimi, along with their errand boys in the Nigerian police, have actually defamed themselves far more than Dele could ever have done. There is no hiding place for them. Dele Farotimi is a brilliant intellectual and a detribalized Nigerian who epitomizes the conscience of the nation by their actions, they have confirmed that Dele is a great giant that they are afraid of. Well, Serap also wrote breaking. The Tinubu administration must immediately release activist Dele Farotimi, who is reportedly arrested for alleged defamation. Nigerian authorities should not be using criminal defamation laws to turn critics into criminals and undermine freedom of expression. The first tweet I had was Omoya Leshoware, who actually posted a video of, um, you know, the CCTV footage of the actual arrest. This has been condemned by the, you know, Nigerian Bar Association, by Afeni Fere. I mean, it really is a gross violation about these sort of arrests. We've seen it only recently. I believe it was this musician who was arrested for defamation. And we talked about the enabling laws. Speed yeah, Speed, Speed Darlington and, and Burna Boy. Dr. Abati, the enabling laws that covers, you know, the arrest for defamation of character. Okay, Section 373 of the Criminal Code deals with defamation. What is defamation? When you expose another individual to ridicule, to uh, hatred, to, or you lower the person's uh, estimation, integrity, in the eyes of uh, members of the uh, public. So to that extent, in other words, we're saying that nobody has a right to defame or libel the other person. That's what the law says. 
The law, however, says that there is defense. If you are speaking out of uh, public interest, if you, there is justification to say that you are saying the truth, in other words, it's not automatic that when you are accused of libel, you know, you will be, uh, you will be, uh, you know, uh, punished for it. Now, there's been some argument, whether it's a criminal offense or it's a civil wrong. Well, in Nigerian laws, a civil wrong can also be a criminal offense, particularly if it leads to a, a breach of peace. In Aviomo, in the Aviomo case, determined by, by Justice Ogunwamuji, which uh, has been quoted in the last two days, what he says is that in Lagos State and Edo State, defamation is not considered a criminal offense. But where it can become a criminal offense is when it leads to breach of public peace and violence. But in this specific case, which the Mazia uh, from Usigwe SEN, you know, had to intervene, we were told that the policeman went to Dele uh, Faro Timis law firm and disrupted the work of the, of, the, uh, of the lawyers, and that even one lawyer was rough-handled in the place. Now, the MBA president and MBA as a body has to stand up to ensure that people do not just keep going to people's law firms and uh, harassing people all over the place. So Mazi Afamusigwe is to that extent right. And then the second thing is that we were told that Dele Farutimi was abducted. It, it was in the, uh, a gangster, uh, a gangster-like, you know, operation that he was picked up. So there are persons who have said he was not arrested, he was abducted. Because if they want to arrest him, he's a lawyer, they will have invited him. Even if he's a lawyer, he's not a lawyer, he will have been invited. And he said about a week ago, he was at the Zone 2 police headquarters, mm -hmm. where he was presented with two different allegations, one by the chairman of uh, United Bank for Africa, the other by Chief uh, Afe Babalola, SAN. Now going to abduct him, coming from a Kitty police command to come and abduct somebody in Lagos. The question that the Nigerian police force will have to explain to us is whether that is standard uh, police operating procedure. Mm -hmm. So it's the untidiness of it that is also part of the problem. The Lagos police command could have apprehended him if that needed to be done, and they could have handed over to the uh, uh, appropriate uh, jurisdiction, not to go and abduct somebody from his office. And the, the uh, Ekiti police command, they even had the courage to come and say that they, they came to Lagos to take him, and they were taking him to Ekiti police uh, command. Seven hours journey. It's, it's a law enforcement, the police is a law enforcement body. They should not be seen to be lawless. Mm -hmm. Finally, whatever the matter is, I don't think Dele Farutimi will be afraid of them. He's a lawyer, he, has, he will get his own lawyers, and he will meet them in court. His rights must be respected, mm -hmm. so that if you accuse a man of defamation does not mean that the man is a convict per se. Yeah. He has a, 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 a line of defenses open to him. Mm -hmm. Truth, public policy, right. justification, and all of that. Right. And absence of malice. Right. Once he can prove that he's not speaking out of malice, and are speaking in public interest. So nobody should think that because they are highly pleased, mm. they can intimidate anybody. And no lawyer is afraid of going to court. No you cannot act intimidate him with Ayo, a lawyer. You suit. know, he had written uh, some comments in a book that was published in Lagos. Why go all the way to Ikiti? Those are some of the angst out there. I mean, but we did see the footage, the CCTV footage, yeah. and you know, the police, they did maintain decorum. You saw that. They were in rough handling him and all of that. No, did they you didn't. see that? They, no. They NBA's, did you see that part? I saw that, but NBA's um, statement mm -hmm. released said that they harassed, the word they used was harassed the, some him. lawyers in the building and seized some of their phones. Okay. So they were not actually gentlemen in this regard. Mm -hmm. And a number of people have said that the police should not be used as a tool, a weapon of oppression. Mm -hmm. We often talk about this a lot of times. And like Dr. Batia said, the people who are meant to be law enforcer, enforcers should not be seen to be breaking the law or disrespecting the rule of law. And I think that's where the challenge is. If you have a grouse with someone, we can talk about the technicalities of Lagos State, Ekiti State, whether they had jurisdiction to come to that's Lagos State to arrest to someone arrest in Lagos State there. and take him to Ekiti State. Those are conversations. But it is the fear that the police seems to favor, so in Nigeria, law enforcement agents like the police seem to favor you if you have power, if you have authority, and would disrespect the law. So what is the hope of the common man? That is the painful thing about this. If a man 
who is outspoken, a lawyer like Dele Faroutime can be treated in this manner. Mm -hmm. Imagine what other um, common Niger or, um, Nigerians on the street are going through, where people who are not investigated are sworn into custody without any pro without proper due process just because someone, they're a, an ogre at the top, or someone who has power and influence, order the police to do so. This is what I was talking about with South Korea, that we have, our institutions are in shambles, and we need to fix that if we're going to have a proper democracy in Nigeria. And yes. I'm glad that a lot of people have come out to speak about this. It can be Dele Faro to me today. It can be anyone else. Tomorrow they come and pick you, Rufai, <laughs> and just bundle you to uh, Kutuwenje or to Kaduna, uh, just I'll because be, you said something. And you know worry. the irony of it, out there the name of the book is Nigeria yeah. and its Criminal Justice System. Yes. Look I mean, at that. Look at it on show. That is the actual irony of it. I mean, uh, we've discussed this at Lent, I know that you have a, a point to make in this so before in we take another. So in 1981, I just have to be sure about the date. In 1981, the last song, song, I'll sing two songs before I brought my point. It said, I open my eye and I see for my country power show. Everywhere, every corner, everybody they do power show. Power show. Bella also sang another song. Zombie, oh, zombie, zombie, oh, zombie. Zombie no go come unless you tell them to come, zombie. Those songs are very apt today concerning the case of Billy Farotimi. And for all that thought Billy Farotimi was very strict and very stern in his words when he would come here and said there was nothing as a Nigerian citizen, Dilly has been proven right today. Daily, take your flowers because you were correct. Because, like Daily will say, Nigerian citizens don't have rights. Their rights are trampled upon. It's just about one big man not liking your face. They'll tell the police, and the police will run along. But the same police that comes to meet us, to defend them. I remember my boss, I admire so much, Prince Uduka Baegwana talking about the story of a guy top there yeah. in military intelligence and the role he did to track down journalists. He said one night he saw somebody Franco in his... Menka. Franco Menka. Yeah, Franco Menka. He saw somebody in his kitchen and the next thing, the same Franco Menka that was violating them now became the Franco Menka that was running for help. Mm. You see, those I really want to talk about, thank you for all of those that have commented and spoke, speaking, speaking up for daily front to me. The do, those that I pity the most are the slaves mm. that are going everywhere to say, good for him, good for him, because he's talking for justice, good for him. Mm -hmm. You see, I will just remind them, as a Yoruba saying, that the cane that was used to beat the last wife is mm -hmm. still there waiting. Yeah. The senior wife. The senior wife is still there waiting for all of us. All of us will chop that cane one day, and you will see how brutal the Nigerian states can do. Yeah, well, so don't worry, keep, keep abusing him. No. You can never be as great as the soul of Dele Rotemi's feet. Yes, I really liked um, Atedo Peterside's tweet okay. though. I love the ending of his tweet where he said, by their actions, that's the people who arrested him, by their actions, they have confirmed that Dele is a great giant that they are afraid of. Well, speaking about um, freedom of speech and press freedom, on Tuesday, a group of protesters stormed the premises of Arise News with banners and placards accusing Arise News of biased reporting and misrepresentation of facts regarding the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC. The group, which was clearly sponsored, carried placards with inscriptions such as Arise News, Stop Bias Press, an NNPC is driving change, report it right, alleged that Arise News constantly misrepresents NNPC's achievements, particularly in the areas of deregulation of PMS and progress in the oil and gas sector. The Coalition of Civil Society Organization Against Corruption, Nigeria Professional and Diaspora, and bloggers express profound disappointments with the constant interpretation and lack of balance reportage by Arise TV regarding the Nigerian Petroleum Company Limited, the NNPC. It is disheartening that a media organization as prominent as Arise TV continues to disseminate unbalanced narrative on crucial national matters such as achievement of the NNPC. 
I mean, these people stormed our premises, Dr. Abati. They came in with all the placards. But before today, we had seen reactions on Twitter, on X, I keep calling it Twitter, saying that, you know, Arise News misrepresents facts. And, you know, I, and I, I was alarmed by those comments about, you know, NNPC. And, and, but we know that here on this table, we always present the facts, and we have balanced reportage. So I was very curious. And you know, you can't just come to a news organization. Our reporters were out there. They followed this group of people and found out that they were bribed. You know, here's a video of some of them fighting <laughs> for money. Let's take a look. They say they will give us money for four K. Eh? After they say they give us four K, the money has become three three K now. But why two? No one sees any money. Now me, no one see that guy, no one see. But the rest of the, the, the remaining of uh, the twelve, twelve, twelve don't see twelve. Twelve guys don't see. Remember, we went to our embassy. They give fourteen. <laughs> Joking. Three? Is it three thousand? No, they say four K. Then they say three K. Sorry, I'm joking. Then some people have not collected. Stop it. Some people have not. Well, let me talk to them. They pay the balance for <laughs> For the group that sponsors all of this and the shenanigans in defense of NPC and the lies, that, let's have them pay the balance because I think we give that. Maybe we should donate to the three three K and give those. Those, talk about those, you know, we those talk about buffers. unemployment in Nigeria yes, yes. and all of that. You know, this is very clear evidence <laughs> that uh, President Tinubu <laughs> has uh, to declare a national emergency <laughs> on joblessness. <laughs> Because look at these people. Yeah. These are very jobless people. Yeah. And they're also very unintelligent. Yeah. Unintelligent to this extent <laughs> that they paid you to go and protest against a company. <laughs> and then within the premises of the company, you are quarreling <laughs> over you know, money that you should have been paid. They should be one. Because I was told that they came into the premises and all that. Now, that's trespass. Mm -hmm. In fact, two, three of them should have been captured mm -hmm. and sued for trespass, for disturbing the operations of uh, Arise News. They can do what they like on the uh, main road, but the clear evidence here is about uh, joblessness. Mm -hmm. And also the uh, level of ignorance in this country. This is also another thing that uh, the government should worry about. Education, to educate people, yes. to, be, to even have basic intelligence. So much uh, mediocrity at all levels. Now, what does Arise News do? We try to provide all shades of opinion. We try to balance the story. We try, you know, even in our interactions on this table, to try as much as possible to be fair. But people have their own interpretations, given their own level of intelligence. Now, on this specific issue of uh, Potakot uh, refinery, yes, some opinions may have been expressed against, but I can cite two strong examples. Mm -hmm. On Saturday last week, yes. I think uh, on uh, morning show, well, weekend morning, morning show, show, there was one. Uh, Sunday, yes. There was one, Mr. Tony Osugwe. Yes, a former uh, MD of uh, NNPC. Uh, Osugwe, yes. president of the yes. uh, Society of Chemical Engineers. He gave explanations. Really? Yes. They were clearly pro government. Correct. Given his experience, in fact, he even said he had been manager of the Portacot refinery. Correct. And his explanations were very robust. What he, the uh, explanations he gave were even replayed on this day live, on Sunday. It was played on all programs. As, okay, sure. well, on you know, I, yes. I present uh, this day live, yeah. so I, I saw it again. Mm -hmm. Then that same Sunday on this day live, we had Jesu Tega Onokpasa, mm -hmm. who addressed the same problem and was saying he was fully in support of uh, the federal government, and that when government does things, you know, that are good, are beneficial, we must support them. Now, all these uh, characters that uh, carry the sponsored placards, did they watch those two programs? Obviously, just, just to cite two examples. Oh, yeah. So this is why I say, you know, joblessness is a major challenge to address. Education, government cannot do too much to educate people so that we don't keep going about with this generation of. Uh, you know, uh, 
uh, I do yeah. citizens right. who could uh, find better time. Uh, uh, look at them in front of the premises. I mean, they should be they should be arrested <laughs> for trespass. You Absolutely, the premises are out there. Audrey, Go ahead. The truth is. And the sad reality is, these are the people that will still go and vote in 2029. You yeah. give them 3K, and they will vote. And they will tip the balance of this country. And they will vote for people that will continue to impoverish us because of the highest bidder. Mm. It is obvious. Plus, those that sponsor them, because we have not been able to link it to people, but those that sponsor them, well, they said they're a coalition. But it shows the joblessness in this country. So that's why when we are saying, when National Bureau of Statistics are saying, uh, unemployment number got better. Why did it get better? Yeah. Look at the loss of these people. That 4,000, they will kill. See the way that one was fighting because of money. Yeah. They will kill. See on the placard, they obviously printed it for them. Mm -hmm. Job for the boys. Because of the level of unemployment in this country. And see, aren't you, what have we not reported? We've reported the facts and balanced facts. See, I particularly was the first to tease at the information I had that Cracked C5 and NAFTA was used to produce. When NMPC released their reports, they didn't talk about Cracked C5 and NAFTA. I teased. The Sahara reporter put out a report. When NMPC was going to uh, put their own next report out, I rejoined that. They confirmed mm -hmm. that it was Cracked C5 and NAFTA. And why are they using Cracked C5 and NAFTA? They themselves said the plant is 70% complete. It's because they don't have a converting unit that will be able to convert the NAFTA produced to high octane. And that's why they're using crack C5 to do the blending because there's no converting unit to do it. And that's what we have explained. Another person came here and said nothing was happening there and all of that. They responded to it. If an NPC has responded, why taking poor Nigerian youths that have been Unfortunate. Unfor that have been rendered this unfortunate by their leaders yeah. that can't even buy the fuel. Oji, I was in the filling station yesterday. All right. The fuel attendant was complaining to me that Oji, people are not coming to buy the fuel. They said they even reduced 13 naira from it yesterday. It was 1,083 in total that I went. They reduced 13 naira. They said people are not still coming to buy the fuel. Yeah, all right. And you can see these people well, galivant because of poverty. I hope that. We need to. I think what I think we should do is mm. that. We need to pack all these boys. Yeah. Christmas period. Do outreach for them. Yeah. Give them food. Yeah. Give them pure water. All right. At least I, I pity for them. True. It's true. It is it's true. We need to do outreach and for them. And then educate them. them. And I hope that they can get the winter balance. Did you see the spot? I saw. I saw. Yeah. I saw. Yeah. Well, I hope that the sponsors of this protest now know that they've been exposed and it was a total failure. We'll take another story. Well, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has responded to the opera on the social media. The agency says the company linked to the forfeited estate in Abuja has denied ownership of the property. Well, AFCC spokesperson Dele Oyewale in a statement on Tuesday said the legal action that led to the forfeiture of the estate was instituted against the property and not the owners in line with the provisions of the Advance Fee Fraud Act. Let me read uh, his statement. He wrote, the allegation of a cover-up of the identity of the promoters of the estate stands logic on its head in the sense that the proceedings for the forfeiture of the estate were in line with Section 17 of the Advance Fee Fraud Act, which is a civil proceeding that allows for action in rem rather than action in personam. All right, um, Ayo, we, we took this story and we charged the EFCC yeah. to reveal the identity of the owner of this property. Apparently, it's not an individual. They had said that it is, you know, a company, and now the company has denied it. I mean, what? Where, where, where are we so now? Some, so the truth is, Dr. Batia said yesterday that yeah. the court documents should detail yeah. who the person or who the people behind um, the properties yes. are. And despite the explanation, I'm sorry to say that it's not sufficient. Mm -hmm. Some people who have been able to, it's just that because it's speculations and speculations, yeah. it would be um, unprofessional to bring up names here based on speculations that have gone out. But the truth is, 
Is it the same principle that applies to ordinary Nigerians whom they name and shame? Because that was the grouse of a lot of people. That the same, a, a different set of rules should not apply to certain people as it applies to others. And so for a number of people, that's the conversation, that we need to be fair across board. And so ESCC's statement in trying to protect itself was not in any way sufficient. No, if you it, want it, to it, release the names of people, release it. If the companies deny it, then it means something is wrong. Did you it rule? It seems like a wild goose chase. Yeah, Where did you, are we did you now rule, on this did you rule on it? matter that you are not sure yes. of the people behind. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. Well, Please, clarify that, this. Uh, ESCC is causing in yeah. their press statements. It's unnecessary. I don't see the reason for the uh, confusion or even for the press for releases the press, yes. by somebody using legal terms that he obviously does not quite understand. Now, they issued a press statement. They said, Somebody who is a top brass mm -hmm. in government. Thank you. That's what we already they had yes. a, shown the indication that, it's an individual. that there is no a certain individual Thank you. that is behind it. Now all this uh, uh, explanation by Dilu Yewali, the action in rem, action in <laughs> personam. Look, action in rem, yes, against a property, against a thing. You know, as in shipping law, if you, you are attaching a, a ship or whatever, action in personam, it means against a person. But even then, if uh, you know he went to a faculty of law, he will know that there's something they call lifting the veil. That's under the law of contract. So even when you are attaching a property, there must be somebody behind mm -hmm. it. And then you can lift the veil. Yeah. I think the locus classicus is Solomon versus Solomon, if I have not forgotten uh, basic law. You know, so let ESCC lift the veil. That's what Nigerians are asking for because the property did not get there, you know, on its own. If it's a plea bargain situation, Nigerians are also saying we need to know. That's it. Anybody that can go and uh, put up uh, 753 units of uh, duplexes must have means. Yes. And that person was not even represented in the court. A, a, a person that can build the 753 duplexes can afford a lawyer mm -hmm. to fight. And it, it, it's not small money. What they call my mind, it's not my mind mm -hmm. that is in that place. Yeah, right. He will have the means to defend it. So if it's split by game, they should uh, tell us. If there is an individual be, behind it, we should know. Trying to uh, say well, it's not That's a cover-up, it's action in REM, it's action in persona, what is all that? Yeah. Please, if they don't want to disclose anything, they should stop issuing, uh, you know, press statements right. that just further cause confusion. Correct. Well said, Dr. Abati. Well, let's head over to South Africa now, where President Cyril Ramaphosa has cancelled passport submissions during tourist visa applications for Nigerians. The move was announced on Tuesday at the opening of the 11th session of the Nigeria-South Africa Binational Commission in Cape Town, which President Bola Ahmed Tinubu was in attendance. Our efforts to create a favorable environment include our simplified visa process for Nigerian business people to travel to South Africa, qualifying Nigerian business people can be granted a five-year multiple entry visa. In addition, tourists from Nigeria are now able to apply for a visa without even submitting a passport. Now, this is great news. We all know that one of the requirements to get a visa from Nigeria is to actually, I mean, from South Africa, is to actually go in and submit your passport. And now they are easing that process. I'll take some reactions about this news. And this person at APC wrote, this is very good. 100%. President Tinubu is rebuilding Nigeria's international reputation. Now our South African brothers are seeing Nigeria as partners in progress, not enemies. South Africa, too, is welcome to tour Nigeria. Another Twitter user there uh, wrote, The real African tradition is dedicated towards showing love and kindness to our fellow African brothers to do business and trade fairly with our fellow Africans. Hatred for one another will keep on pushing us backwards. Africa must begin attempting to disassemble all borders within our territory. Doing this would ensure we achieve quicker development and growth. Together, we are strong. Divided, we are weak. 
Africa Unite. I mean, this is such great news. I mean, we've always talked here on the show about Unite Africa and all these borders. I believe it was Prince Nduka Obaibina that, I, you know, had um, gave a, a speech recently where he talked about opening the borders and, you know, having access to trade and all these policies that can favor us Africans together really quickly. I'm very happy about this, but I'm also very skeptical. Tell me why. They say the taste of the Agbadu mm. is in the eating of the Agbadu. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use pudding. I mean, we but didn't grow up with pudding. Mixed it. And we mixed it, yeah. Or the taste of the, uh, uh, you know, rice or jollof rice mm -hmm. is in the food. Let's see the practicality of this. Mm -hmm. Let's see the visa approval downtimes. Okay. Let's see how that pans out. Let people start to use it. But also, I'm also very skeptical. Because South Africans over the years have given us room to, to be skeptical. The way Nigerians have been treated. I have a lot of very good South Africans. The High Commissioner, very great guy, you know, Professor Bobby and all of that. But the way Nigerians have been treated in their country, will that treatment change? Will you be able to shift the mindset of South Africans towards us? And we don't deserve to be treated that way. I mean, like Dr. Bati was saying this morning, these were the same people that we did so much for. I have copious evidence of how the likes of Tabo Mbeki lived in Lagos, used to come to the office of the Guardian newspaper then. And people extended hospitality towards them. And they pushed most of their kids here. We all know Tabo Mbeki earlier, later on, became uh, the president in South Africa. And we are now being treated this way. Although on people to people diplomacy, diplomacy, Dr. Vas also talked about the women issue. How when they were here, they were taking off our women, but we, our men too in South Africa too, are retaliating because we have steez. So just steez alone, the African women are rushing to us. All but right. apart from all of that, we need to be able to develop the people to people relation. Mm -hmm. This is a welcome development, but let's see how it works. Yes. When it starts to work, when we see the bottlenecks, We'll be able to talk more about it. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, before we move on, and I wanted to highlight this story. Uh, Shidima is yes. another very bad case. Well, I hope that this whole you know relationship between Nigeria and South Africa yes. will begin to ease all of those um, you know um, issues that we've had in the past. I wanted to highlight this um, story, though. I, I thought it was quite amazing to see this young man who has begun a trekathon. Oluwa Nishola Akimbo, popularly known as Mr. Nigeria 101, Akimbo posted a video on social media saying that he will be trekking from Ibadan to Abuja to meet with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on behalf of the Nigerian youth over the ongoing hardship in the country. The journey of trekking from Ibadan to Abuja is certain and I must achieve it on behalf of all Nigerians, especially the youths. I want to be there to come and meet the Mr. President or the Youth Ambassador, Egbawa Sheitinobu, to ask them some relevant questions. Where are we and where are we going in this country? Because we believe in the system, but the system has been failing us over and over again, but we won't fail ourselves. I know, but I want it. I mean, what is actually going on here? Does he actually know that President Tinubu is not in the country I for now? I mean, how long back, will it take for him? Go ahead, quickly. It goes back to what so, we said about the protests. Yes. Just joblessness, joblessness. unemployment yes. numbers, and I hope that that would be the top of his <laughs> conversation. <laughs> 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 President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. We miss the trekkers. Remember during President Buhari's time? Uh, we have yes. one week, one trekker, <laughs> one week, one person in solidarity. So yeah. on the banner, he said he was going to represent Nigerian youth. Yes. I don't know. So, so it's a, it's, Nigeria is a nation of comedy. Yeah. It's like Papa Jasko, you watch the news and it's almost too, too uh, unreal, to, you know, to, yeah. to, to, to he take very seriously. He says he's going to go and meet he's got Dr. Bati really quickly. He wants to go well, and meet Well, he yeah. says he's country boy, <laughs> yes. he wants to go and meet uh, city, city boy. City boy, boy yes. Well, before he gets to Abuja, let him be sure that President Tinubu is on seat. He's on seat. Let, let it not be that uh, he has returned from uh, South Africa yeah. and he has gone he to has Singapore. Gone to <laughs>
<laughs> All our wives, they will have, a waste they of his time. I just him, wanted man. to, a little bit of comedy here. But I also wanted to highlight this video of presidential spokesman, Bayo Nonuga, who in a post on X yesterday showcased himself as a farmer. In the post, he humorously declared, I am now a farmer journalist tending to some vegetables planted in my house in Lagos. The vegetables replaced the grass. I mean, I think this is also a great, great showing. Well, kudos to uh, Bayo Nonuga, please. I really liked this video. Finally, why are you smiling? Yeah, Bobby, <laughs> uh, uh, are, what the, way, the way Mr. Nonuga yes. is uh, touching those man, yes. he's not doing it like a farmer. <laughs> hey, Bobby. Oh, you know, he's always been a journalist. Like, let's cut him some slice. He's doing like a butter oh, farmer. Yes, yes, go ahead. Hey, Bobby, hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. Yes. Uh, let me eat your vegetable for Christmas, please. I can I can no. send my address over to you. I will text it over to you, sir. And Let's eat the vegetable. It's for Christmas. And it's too corporate yeah. as a farmer. No, I but you can give us more now. No, you but you know, he's wearing a designer t-shirt. And he's just saying he's farming. But I mean, I think that this is a big thing to do, actually. I love it. And I would love to encourage people to join uh, that. Yeah. Because this is what we've always been talking about. We want to move our you know, country from consumption to production. What have you produced? Why don't you guys no, try to? To produce I things, to yes. No, so it's very, farming. it's very my, encouraging. My you do yes. high five. Have, good job, have, please. Do, have, it's great. Oh, it's great. Well, yeah, kudos to Bio, Bio Ononuga. Well, all right. We'll take our final story now in the United Kingdom, where 44-year-old Toby Adegboyega, a pastor whose church was shut down over an alleged. 1.87 million pound fraud has lost his fight against deportation despite claiming it will breach his human rights. The pastor, who is a cousin of Star Wars actor John Boyega, is set to be deported back to Nigeria after investigations exposed misuse of funds by his church. Adi Boyega was the head of SPAC Nation, a controversial church that was shut down after failing to properly account for millions of pounds and operating with a lack of transparency. The pastor claimed that the deportation will breach his right under the European Convention of Human Rights to a family life, having married a British woman. Ayo, you know I will look at you quickly. <laughs> so this I'll is sorry. sorry. You so that because I think using mm -hmm. the term pastor mm -hmm. is, is very, it's, it's a bit liberal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was pastor, I said pastor, Dr. Lufumalayo, who best described me, says, um, a popular UK-based lifestyle influencer and designer brand content creator, fondly it. known as pastor. So in fact, someone was saying that they thought it was the same way he said Dr. Seed. Mm -hmm. Dr. Seed is a real doctor, by the way, but like how some yeah, people have some monikers, and that's how he came about the name of pastor. Because I think it's, it's important to differentiate these things. Yes. He, he runs a ministry which was closed down by the British government because of um, 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 cases or allegations, like no, no longer allegations actually, of mismanagement of funds up to the tune of 1.8 million pounds. And now as a result of that, they're saying that they're going to deport him. What I'm not sure of is the fact that, and I we're having this conversation, he's married to a British national, so he does have rights to family life. And the British are quite big on human rights, you know, laws and the fact that he has a right to be in the same place as his family. But I think that it speaks to a bigger thing around even the people that support his lifestyle. You see someone who does not have a commensurate um, source of income living lavishly, and no one is asking questions. We celebrate these things. We just you know shout out, and we don't talk about the fact that what, where are you getting the money from? How did you get? And I think it's unfair for them to have linked him to John no, Wayne yeah, that, that, yeah. because unfair. they don't have any. They don't. I, I've never seen a picture of them together uh, or I them related to each other with John Wayne. Yeah, but it's unfair to actually bring him them, into yeah. this. But, but mm -hmm. I think but. it's also the very terrible thing the British press does. Yes. You just try yeah. what you want to link to link him to say yeah yeah yeah. That's not fair. Don't do that to John. But I mean the accusations, Doctor Abati. I don't know if you have read some of them. We only have a minute about this whole scheme that the past. Or had run. I believe that you know they had talked about that he also uh, was involved in some sort of um, cultism, cult as yeah. well, and with children, you know, defrauding children, having them go and apply for you know credit cards and all of that. A quick comment before we well, end. I mean, he's having his day with in the uh, law courts, with mm -hmm. the tribunal, uh, you know, in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. I think that the uh, legal process within that jurisdiction should be allowed to take uh, its effect. As to whether he's an impersonator or not, we are not in a position mm -hmm. to determine that. But interestingly, it's in a jurisdiction where you cannot just behave anyhow. Yeah. Where you cannot say, 
uh, I'm a pastor, mm -hmm. and then you say you have a direct phone call with God every morning. Yeah. The kind of, uh, you know, charlatanism that we see, right. you know, in many parts of uh, Nigeria. All right. So that is the important part. I guess we'll follow up on the story as always. Well, I'd love to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.